Just like everyone else in the early 2000s, Sonic the Hedgehog went through an emo phase. In all seriousness, Sonic the Hedgehog is a huge franchise with lots of media. I'd say most of it is lighthearted and fun, especially nowadays, but for a while, Sonic got pretty edgy. Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Uh, that sounded really terrible. From early Sonic to about 2010, there were lots of games with serious stories, gritty tones, and a darker aesthetic. I don't know, I've always felt like Sega, or more specifically Team Sonic, had no real idea what they wanted the games to be, so they tried all these different things, and that's why there's so much difference between Sonic media. The tones, characters, and stories feel kind of inconsistent from one another. They seem like they keep struggling to find Sonic's footing. At first, it was all about machines and industrialization. Sonic and his friends represented the forces of nature, and then it would later have like time travel and war and death. And then with Sonic Colors, which to be fair I actually like, it took a very light and vibrant turn. And then you got Sonic Boom, which I don't even know what they were thinking there. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't want to sit here and say new thing bad, old thing better, however, a lot of the edgy Sonic games have actually received some flack, and I want to state why I think they were actually good. I'd also like to shout out The PJ Show, sounds dumb to say shout out when he has way more subscribers than me, but I only decided to make this after watching his Sonic character development video essays. They're really entertaining, well made, and I found his commentary to be very insightful. If you don't subscribe to him, I will, I don't know, come to your house. Anyway, the first thing I want to talk about is Sad AM. That's the fan name given to the Sonic the Hedgehog animated show from the 90s. I grew up watching this. I wasn't born in the 90s or anything, but my parents knew I was obsessed with video games when I was really young, so they'd reward me with things like the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, Captain N, Legend of Zelda cartoon, and other video games and video game shows for good grades. And one of them was the 1993 Sonic cartoon. So it took place in Mobius. I'm, I'm trying really hard to not say Morbius. <laughs> which had already been taken over and turned into an industrialized wasteland thanks to the dictator Robotnik. Sonic and his friends are freedom fighters representing nature and take it upon themselves to dismantle Robotnik's industrial regime. The style's very dark. Instead of Amy, we get Sally Acorn, who I think is a way better character. She's calmer, more sensible, less annoying, and the whole love thing isn't one-sided. She's way less cartoonish. It's a shame that she was replaced with Amy later. You know, Sonic was the cocky teen jokester and Sally was the more serious companion that kept him in line. And this here is Julian Robotnik, not to be confused with Ivo Robotnik or Eggman. They're technically the same character, but I mean, are they really? It's like how technically King Koopa in the Mario cartoons represented Bowser, but they weren't all too similar. Julian is much more sinister and a threatening force to be reckoned with. This depiction of Robotnik is truly the best throughout all of Sonic. He's still eccentric enough, but he's also brutal and, well, an actual villain. One of the things he does, he kidnaps Sonic's uncle Chuck and roboticizes him. He reprograms Chuck into an enemy. Nowadays, Robotnik's basically become a joke. He's kind of a coward, he's easily defeated, and he doesn't really do anything with the power he so desperately fights for. But back then, he was dangerous, intelligent, cunning, and full of twisted rage. Even just his appearance is creepier, his black eyes with red, as if he's roboticized himself to an extent because of how much faith he has in technology. It also explained these metal things on the side of his head. His eyes are narrowed and angry. New Robotnik looks like some dork at your local Halo LAN party. And I love the plot of Sad AM too, I love the nature versus machines aspect of earlier Sonic. It really is getting crazy how much technology is pushed with things like AI, Neuralink. Mobile apps and digital cards are pushed and even forced in some places now. It's infecting us, and some can argue that's for better, some can argue that's for worse. What I'm trying to say is society getting lost in the sauce in it to the detriment of nature is a real concern. So Sonic the Hedgehog and his squad being the ones to oppose that was really meaningful and gave unique depth to the franchise. You're gonna, you're gonna hear me use that word a lot. Depth. Sonic is fighting against very realistic social-political situations. It really sucks that most of the show with all of its characters has been largely forgotten. I wish they took more elements from it going forward. And despite the fact that I miss those old characters, I think Knuckles, Rouge, Amy, Shadow, Silver, Blaze, and the new lineup is relatively solid. Uh, was relatively solid. The next game I'd like to talk about is Sonic Adventure 2. By this point, the primary characters were mostly established. You had Sonic and Tails, Dynamic Duo, Knuckles, whose life purpose was to guard the Master Emerald, Rouge, who's basically like a pirate and a double agent, Amy, who's in love with and obsessed with Sonic, and Eggman, the cartoonish but sinister enough villain. Very nice setup. But what I want to talk about here is Shadow. The story of Sonic Adventure 2 and Shadow is absolutely wild and dark. 
So to recap, 50 years ago in a lab in space called the Space Colony Ark, Eggman's grandpa Gerald Robotnik was told by a branch of government called Gunn to work on a project to find the key to immortality. He refused at first, but when his granddaughter Maria had this disease that she was slowly dying from, he wanted a way to save her, so he started working on the ultimate life form, which could harness the power of Chaos Control and the Chaos Emeralds. First thing he created was a giant lizard who needed machines just to survive, which was a big fail. He then created Shadow the Hedgehog, Shadow became friends with Maria, and both of them often talked about visiting Earth one day since they both lived in the space lab for their entire lives. Gunn feared people might get suspicious after the giant lizard incident, so they raided the lab and shot and killed everyone who knew about it except for Gerald. They imprisoned him. And then Shadow got away. Maria sent Shadow to Earth in an escape pod and told him to protect the people and give them a chance, and he promised her that right before she was shot and killed by one of the gun agents. Shadow actually watched her die while pulling the lever to his escape pod to Earth. He was sent down but then sealed away in a government facility on Guantanamo Bay, or Prison Island. Gunn continued to make Gerald work on projects, though he had gone insane since Maria was killed and under their noses started secretly creating ways to destroy all of humanity. When Gunn caught wind of this, they sentenced him to death by firing squad and he was killed, but he had everything programmed into action. Shadow was to find the Chaos Emeralds and activate the giant cannon on the now abandoned Space Colony Ark, and that big laser cannon would be used to destroy Earth. And then present day Eggman breaks into the facility, frees Shadow, and with all of his memories in disarray, Shadow doesn't fully know who to trust and goes along trying to find himself while working with Eggman to take vengeance for Maria's death. I absolutely love this story. It's complex, dark, cool, and extremely well written, especially for a kid's game. This is the definition of depth. It's so tragic, and everyone has reasonable motives. I mean, I guess except for Gunn, who just went up and shot and killed everybody, but realistically, the government and military don't always have the most reasonable motives for things in the first place, so art imitates life, I guess. Shadow's memories are so scattered and he doesn't really know what to do. He goes along with what he wants, which is at first revenge, but he starts to find himself doing heroic things like saving Rouge. He eventually remembers the promise and takes it so seriously that he pulls an Iron Man and dies to the power of the Chaos Emeralds, sacrificing himself for humanity. I don't even think he was supposed to come back after this game, but because he was such a fan favorite character, he's since returned. See, I, I miss when kids media was like this, so deep and full of well-built plot stories and hard topics that children will eventually come to learn about in the real world, like Five Nights at Freddy's, which I talk about a lot on this channel. It used to be a creepy horror game with tragedy and mystery that you had to put together. Now it's all goofy, Disney-ass, Pillow Fort wizardry shit. I miss games like Smash Bros. Brawl in comparison to New Smash, which I'm actually planning on making an entire video about. Another example is Ninjago. It had its hard times with broken families and death. Now everything is just... skibbity whatever brain rot. Actually, as crazy as it sounds, Skibbity Toilet's also dark and mysterious with its own complex lore about the camera head men versus the toilets. I mean, I'd much rather watch that than... Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Now everything is so safe and stale and overproduced with bright colors. The next game I want to talk about is widely hated, Shadow the Hedgehog. Most people hated it because of the overly edgy tone. I think the most controversial thing was Shadow holding a gun. I remember all these people saying, Oh, the game sucks. Shadow with a gun in a kid's game? You know what I have to say to that? That's awesome! How, how did so many people hate on this? Shadow wielding a gun goes hard. This is badass. I mean, yeah, he doesn't necessarily need a gun given how powerful he is, but he looks sick holding that. I don't really know what y'all were on when you hated this. Is it just because, oh, it's a kid's game? Because if so, pretty much everyone I know played Call of Duty growing up. I don't think any actual thought-out argument could combat how dope he looks holding it, though. So anyway, the meat and potatoes, there were some retcons and additions to Shadow's backstory. They were unnecessary, but not bad. Basically, Gerald used the blood of some demonic alien creature to make Shadow in exchange for the Chaos Emeralds next time they visited Earth. In case they decided to turn on Earth, Gerald built that big laser cannon I was talking about earlier on the Space Colony Ark. I don't really see a problem with this added lore. A big complaint is Shadow's lack of heroism. Instead of rushing to save the people from demonic aliens that invade, he calls them pathetic and says he doesn't have time for them. <sighs> Look how pathetic they are. I don't have time for these humans. Between the games, a lot of people don't know that Shadow's memory was once again scattered. He even had this whole existential crisis over whether or not he was a droid made by Dr. Eggman. His mindset is basically reset back to the way it was in Sonic Adventure 2, but with even less memory than before. It does kind of suck to have him go through the exact same character arc of having him go through things to remember his past with Maria, but this game gives you so many choices. 
And that's what I love most about Shadow the Hedgehog, is the fact that there are like 10 different endings and oddly specific routes that bring you through different parts of the story. And even though the hero path is canon, I think, the other endings are essential to get Shadow's full character. At the beginning, he's still figuring out who he is, and so you get to see all these different ways he could have chosen to find himself. You decide how he goes about self-searching, so all the endings contribute to his character. And the hero ending is the true ending because that's who Shadow the Hedgehog is. He's a hero, or rather an anti-hero. Next is Sonic 06, and yeah, this game is unplayable. And the entire Human Princess plot was ridiculous, and the game itself is really, really bad. But there are a lot of things I liked about it. The entire plot with Silver and Blaze was really cool. Mephilus was a badass villain. The story portrayed Shadow, Rouge, and all the other characters spot on. There are so many great moments. So basically, Silver and Blaze live in a dystopian future. Their world is engulfed by a fiery creature named Iblis who they can't kill. So a suspicious and creepy character named Mephilus sends them to the past to stop the one who triggered Iblis' existence. Mephilus points them to Sonic the Hedgehog, so when Silver arrives in the present, that's who they look for. And, you know, there's this one moment where Silver makes friends with Amy, but then he tries to kill Sonic. Amy stops him and says this. No! I don't believe it. Even if that was true. If I had to choose between the world and Sonic, I would choose Sonic! This alone makes Silver ponder his choices. Well, uh, Blaze? To kill someone to save the world. Is that really the right thing to do? See, this shows development. He just wants to do what he thinks is right, but he knows he might be on the wrong path. Meanwhile, Mephilus is as evil as it gets. Basically, the human princess's father was experimenting with this ancient flame and separated the sun god Solaris into Iblis and Mephilus. Mephilus wants to become one with Iblis and turn into Solaris. However, Along the way, he wants to cause as much destruction and hurt as possible. He can time travel at will, so he doesn't even need to do any of this stuff, he just does it for fun. Everything from his looks to the lack of mouth to his voice... <laughs> ...to his theme, it's all super disturbing. He psychologically messes with the characters, and his goal is to make the princess cry, which unleashes Iblis, and to do that, he literally kills Sonic just pulls up and busts a cap in his ass, whatever you kids are saying these days. He tries to tear Shadow apart by getting in his head, and he tries to turn Omega against him. You may have been programmed by humanity, but what you did to Shadow in the future, that was your... He tells Shadow that the world is gonna hate him and kill him in the future, and Shadow's response to this is pretty badass. You forgive humanity this folly then? I determine my own destiny. And later, Mephilus continues to try and convince him when Shadow drops this cold one-liner. Why fight it all? Why risk your life for those who will persecute you later? If the world chooses to become my enemy, I will fight like I always have. Sonic dies, Blaze sacrifices himself, Mephilus is Joker levels of evil, the characters grow and change, and I haven't seen this level of depth in kids entertainment in the last decade or so, probably since Ninjago seasons 5 or 6. And I miss it, I miss the I'm 14 and this is deep Sonic, the teeter on the edge of no longer being a kids game. After 06 they'd slowly start to drop the gritty edgy style, but not before releasing Sonic Unleashed. I love this game, I know it's got a lot of odd choices in it, but I had a ton of fun playing it. The story was pretty interesting, I, I mean I don't know what Eggman got out of turning Sonic into a werehog, but I thought the concept was pretty interesting. Maybe I'm just emo and that's why I miss this stuff. Eggman is trying to unleash Dark Gaia, which is a monster inside the Earth, and Sonic is followed by this little dude who turns out to be Light Gaia, and they have to like save the world basically. I, I don't remember too much about it, I don't have any issues with it, but after this game is when things start to go downhill. Enter Sonic Colors. Now, this is the first Sonic game I grew up playing, this is the first one I touched, it's incredibly fun and holds a soft spot in my heart. That said, this represents pretty much most of Sonic going forward, most of what I don't like about it. Eggman isn't very threatening, he acts like a bumbling cartoonish idiot. Tails is basically there for comic relief. Okay, he says his name is Talks a lot, and he's from a faraway soda, and where flowers water them with dances. 
He doesn't really do anything important. It's no longer a trio. Knuckles takes a huge backseat, as Sonic and Tails are the main duo. I miss when Knuckles was there. Red, yellow, blue. So this all begs the question of why. Why do I like older, edgy Sonic? Mostly just the depth. Every character's arc and story really challenged you to think. Everything wasn't so one-dimensional. Sure, games like Sonic 06 fell flat in terms of gameplay, but they really tried to do something cool with the story. They weren't afraid to tackle harder topics, whereas things like Smash Bros, I'm fine with Brawl just being the dark emo phase for Smash, but I think that Sonic the Hedgehog thrived in its own darker place, especially compared to the newer content. The newer stuff doesn't challenge you to think much. Without that slight edge to it, Sonic has just become a less than mediocre kids franchise. It got totally cocomeloned. Luckily, the movies have been doing the games justice. The portrayal of all these situations have enough depth while still being fun and happy. Knuckles is back to being comically serious instead of comically stupid. Tails is an adorable nerd, kind of a creepy stalker, but you know, whatever. Jim Carrey's eccentric enough while still playing a threatening Eggman. My only criticism with the movies is the music being corny pop rather than the classic fast rock that defined the auditory style of Sonic. Why is he saving the city to it's tricky rather than I see it, I see it, and now it's all within my reach. Besides that, everything's depicted pretty much perfectly in line with the games. I really hope they capture the darkness of Shadow's story in Sonic 3. Considering the PG-13 rumors and the fact that one of the people on the movie says it's like an Avengers-level event, I'd like to think that they are. It's such a complex and serious story that, honestly, a part of me will actually be surprised if they pull this off with a plot above 6 out of 10 by my own standards, but we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you subscribe, I'll give you a brand new Tesla. Like, it'll just suddenly appear in your garage overnight. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. Alright, laters.